I had family members who really didn't understand bisexuality and they thought that it was a phase, you know, and that either I was a lesbian and like not ready to admit it or straight and just a college girl who's confused. I'm like, no, I'm bisexual, but it's like 85% 85% women and 15% the other, <laughs> yeah. you know, other, you just describe it as other and 15% other. other. <laughs> 15% other. <laughs> Welcome to Queer Talk, the number one podcast to connect you to all of your favorite queer creators and a space where we share our stories on all things queer related. And hey, if you're new, listen to this, give us a follow on Spotify and subscribe on Apple Podcasts. Also guys, we are now streaming full video episodes on YouTube. So you can watch these uh, episodes on your TV, phone, tablet, wherever you're tuning in. So be sure to hit that subscribe button. Uh, Link to watch is in the description below. Guys, today our guest is a queer internet personality, YouTuber, new podcaster, and and (laughs) Bicon. You can find her at Georgia Bridgers. Welcome, Georgia Bridgers. Hi, thank you so much for having me, Brie. I'm very excited to be here virtually today. (laughs) Super excited to have you on. Guys, if you didn't know... Georgia Bridgers is a Cincy gal. She was born and raised in Cincinnati. You know it. Super fun. I swear to God, my cat is literally being a spaz over here. Um, (laughs) I'm just waiting uh, for my dog to have just like the loudest bark of all time at some point during this podcast. She's scared of everything, but she is very much so protector dog. So just be prepared. (laughs) A real Lion King roar. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Well, yeah, it was so funny. I had originally saw you when you had like 4,000 subscribers on YouTube, like swear to God. You no came up way. With my suggestions. Yes. And that That's was an I, OG. Yeah. Swear. OG. No and, one remembers me from that era. <laughs> yeah. I honestly think it's, it was because you're from Cincy and they probably geolocated. They did something the Definitely. algorithm, whatever. And you came up on a suggested video and I was really deep into YouTube then. I was like watching a lot of queer YouTube and all of that stuff. And I was like, oh, Mm -hmm. pop on over to her. Like, okay, that's cool. Let's see what's going on. And then when, uh, you know, whenever later you had posted that really viral video with your mom and I was like, holy shit, I feel like I follow her. I think I follow her. And I looked and I was like, oh my God. No way. Yeah. You are an OG. That like, warms my heart so much. Yeah. Like I just, I love it when people, um, people will comment on my videos and be like, I love you so much. I followed you since 2018. I'm like, honey, you missed the worst era I would <laughs> say of my YouTube career, which was 2016 to beginning of 2018 yeah. pre queer Georgia coming out. It's just a lot of fifth harmony on there. A lot there of was harmony. so much fifth harmony. <laughs> I didn't even know. So at oh the time, um, my my girlfriend at the time was obsessed with Lauren Haragi, and and um, and Story so sometimes yeah she would watch and she's like oh my god I love Lauren Haragi and uh, I was never a big like girl group person and, and Fifth Harmony person but she was and so I was like oh like this YouTuber I follow she's from Cincinnati and she's like fairly new or whatever and I remember having that conversation with her but I watched your meteoric rise like legitimately it was so cool because normally when you see people who have followings you don't really know where it came from and I love that I want to know what's the source all of that yes. I always go back to old videos when I see it's so intriguing yeah I find it so intriguing and so to be able to actually not have to do that and I was like holy shit I like legit watched and I watched your yes. Instagram and I watched it all and I was like that fucking Cincinnati girl like let's yep. go that's like part of me I was like yeah like yes you know, go red prideful yeah <laughs> seriously very prideful in Cincinnati it really is like if you're from Cincinnati even though we all hate Ohio it's like I will die for Cincinnati (laughs) where swear yeah most places in in Ohio can you know they can go fuck their cousins but other than that I mean that's that's how I feel about it um (laughs) but yeah so that's that's kind of like the backstory and so I kind of just watched that and I was like holy shit like oh look she's popping off look at the people she's collabing with yeah it brings back a lot of memories All right, Georgia, I have a question for you. So when it comes to being in the internet spotlight, and I've, I've interviewed a lot of creators and, and have creator friends and stuff like that. And I've kind of noticed I'm such a big person when I observe people and like notice their process and stuff like that. And like, when it comes to creating content, 
you know, have you had to set boundaries for yourself when it comes to like how much of yourself you put out there? Because I feel like when you start creating content, whether on like whatever platform, it's always, I feel like, and I found this way too, like, how do I best myself or how do I make better, more viral content, shocking, all that stuff. And um, have you had to like set boundaries to how much of, you know, yourself that you put out there, if anything? Yeah, that's, that's a really good question because it's definitely... Like as I have grown up and matured over the years, I would say my channel has grown up and matured over the years and what I'm comfortable with sharing. The way that I gained my followers was kind of, as we said before, like an instantaneous thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like I slowly but surely got to understand the hang of things. It was like I had 6,000 subscribers and then I had 100,000 subscribers in a matter of two weeks. Crazy. So I was like, I was very used, I've always been used to sharing myself. I don't know if it's because I'm narcissistic in the sense that I like to talk about myself, (laughs) but I think I love sharing so much because I love when other people share Mm -hmm. and then I can get, I feel like you get a a better understanding of a human through sharing and being vulnerable. I'm super into Brene Brown and Brilliant just the brand. power of vulnerability and all that stuff. That's been more of a recent thing. In the sense of in the beginning, I think what a lot of people don't realize is that even though I'm putting out so much content, what I am showing is typically like 10 to 20% of my real life, mm-hmm. you know, and yeah. all my innermost workings. And I had to kind of set boundaries in a sense where. Like there are just some things that I'm not comfortable talking about with strangers. Like I'm not even comfortable talking about these things with friends. Yeah. And of course we get the internet trolls. Yep. And especially being a person whose main content is sexuality. Mm -hmm. Like I literally, this is kind of a sidebar, but a little example. I came out with my first podcast episode today um, called On My Mind. And I already got a listener email saying something along the lines of calling me like a silly little gay girl who like (laughs) this person said something along the lines of, I know you have a girlfriend and you're bisexual, which I think is crazy. And I'm like, oh, nice. Thank you. How is that? This is really like, yes, I'm crazy, but my sexuality isn't crazy, you know? So things like that, where I just have to set boundaries for my own personal growth. Yeah. But also showing my true emotions. Mm -hmm. I used to think that people only ever wanted to see happy, happy, happy Mm -hmm. bisexual Georgia. Yeah. Like shooting rainbow out of all the holes of my body. Shooting rainbows at your ass. That was bad. (laughs) Yeah. I I was going to say that, but I was like, would people be uncomfortable with that imaging? Perhaps, perhaps not. <laughs> it's up but to them to make, yes, you know. I guess we could so. say when I started my YouTube, I was shooting rainbows out of my ass. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> but I was, I wasn't actually like, I wasn't in a good place in my life. Yeah. So I was putting up this facade because it's mm-hmm. what I thought people wanted, but then that turned into just me not being my true self. Yep. So I would say like I teeter totter with boundaries all the time being a content creator, but the biggest boundary that I guess I would say I have, or don't necessarily have is just like putting out the real me yeah, and making sure I'm being authentic in what I create. Yeah. I think that's the best, the best course of action. I feel like it is hard because you're like, oh, like I'm here to entertain and and educate and be super happy and peppy and super like animated and like high energy, but it it obviously isn't always like that. And I think it's hard to go through that. I think it's so funny that she said silly girl. First of all, I fucking hate when people say that. Are you like from the 1950s or my dad? Also, it was a man. I know it was a man who emailed me too. So that's even just double on top where I'm like, I'm ready to fight. Silly girl. I don't want to give this person any attention that they want, but I'm like- fuck you when people say that it just makes me feel like so it's so sexist like silly girl yes. you know like and I know the whole thing between like girl what are and you woman. my grandfather yeah yeah and I get it like I say girl all the time because sometimes woman just sounds weird and that's probably just because of the patriarchy but mm-hmm. like when it's Sorry when someone pairs the... it with silly like not even like 
at least say it with your chest. Call me a crazy yeah. bitch. <laughs> Don't call me a silly girl. I'm like, not say a silly with your girl. Chest. I'm a crazy bitch. So yeah, get it right. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> yeah. I hate it. I, I literally hate passive aggressive homophobic people. Like be oh overtly homophobic. God, like me send, too. send me the fucking you're homophobic bag with the gun. You're homophobic. In my, yeah. Be, be real about it. I mean, that's, that shit's a hate crime, but like. Talk about how I'm going to burn in hell or yeah. get the fuck off my socials. <laughs> yeah. Like there was a point where I was making content and I was like, damn, I haven't gotten on straight con or like straight TikTok because I haven't gotten any, like no one's worried about my like eternal yeah. soul. I'm like, are you worried? Like pay attention to me. I need that. <laughs> Come Excuse on. me. Hi, I'm over here. I'm being Libra. bisexual. Hello. You know, it's like once every couple of weeks, I'll get a really awesome Bible verse somewhere on my account saying like, Jesus is the way to heal. I'm like, oh. Oh yeah, like I know I go to church, yeah. but not that kind of church. You silly yeah. girl. <laughs> God, I hate that. So triggering. Yeah, that stuff is crazy. Brene Brown. Yeah. So oh. when you had talked about that, you know, because I, you don't, you know, you do post stuff that is emotional. I think that's great. Um, and I had gone my through my own like um, emotional journey with like feeling like I couldn't share my emotions and having them be suppressed and compartmentalized for so long and like, yay, mm -hmm. therapy. And <laughs> when I came across Brene Brown, she, you know, had TED Talks and books and things like that. And I was in this super self-development, like part of phase where I was just obsessed with like looking that stuff up. And yep. I really like related to her studies on vulnerability and shame and things like that, because no yes. one talks about that shit because that is like the deep shit. It, it's like you have your anger and you have all of this stuff, but like underneath it is like fear and like it's a the fear and the shame. Yeah. It's the, it's the like beginning of everything. And until we decide to like understand that and face it, like it'll never go away, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah. just sitting down and just saying like, I'm scared about this. That yep. just takes the pressure away from it 10 times even more. Cause it's like, okay, like I I've admitted that I'm scared. Now I can move on yep. to the next step. Yep. Or saying that you're nervous when you're nervous being like, Hey, I'm scared. Yes. Yes, exactly. It just really evens the mood out. But yeah, I feel like I, and once I like accepted that, I was like, Ooh, like that is probably the most, like out of all the achievements I feel like I've had in my life. Like that is my most personal achievement. I feel cause I've like, this is, this took me forever to figure out. And, mm -hmm. you know, because vulnerability is bravery. It is, it is being yes. brave and like doing the brave thing. And, and, and if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. And that can be just like yeah. anything, but like, I look for that in people now, like when people talk about their emotions, but they don't say like, Oh, I fucking hate. I had um, dated this person and they were like, yeah, I'm such an empath. I'm such this and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, all right, well, uh -oh. you're, you're no, saying, I'm yeah, no, but no, you weren't <laughs> kidding though. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> yeah. No street that was like, you know, there's the new meme going around that's like R.I.P. blah blah blah. You would have really loved blank. It was like R.I.P. Narcissus. You would have really loved a disease being named after you. And someone yeah. said underneath, like Narcissus would have self-identified as an empath. And I'm like, mm-hmm. <laughs> well, she didn't end up being now. A now I but... also. <laughs> Uh -oh. <laughs> but she would like when she would say stuff like she's like oh I'm, you know like we're so communicative and all of that and, but she when she would talk about her emotions it was I'm like annoyed I am frustrated I am annoyed I am like all of those things like I, uh, I'm anxious she would never mm -hmm. say things like I'm scared or I'm sad or I'm disappointed oh, and like all that stuff. Okay. And I remember being so fr like frustrated, like frazzled, like just fucking like, I know that you feel this way. Just tell <laughs> you me. You were frustrated, frazzled. Yeah. Sad. <laughs> yeah. I it's was not, like, I, I know it's really hard and it's not an overnight thing, yep. you know? And also, uh, sorry to all the empaths out there. I feel you. We don't hate you. We're just talking about the narcissist. Who identify as empaths? <laughs> yeah. If someone outright says they're an empath without like any discussion, like run, just run, go. go. Red flag, red flag. Yeah. <laughs> red flag. First um, date, I'm an empath. I'm like, oh. Fuck no, get out of my face. But there's some people that are like, and they, the way they describe like their stuff, like 
um, and they'll say, you know, like, I feel like some people, you know, I don't know, there's like a, t- there's a type of thing where they're like, yeah, like someone described me as an empath or something like that. And I feel like that's kind of fine. But yeah, mm-hmm. outright is not the best. Let's talk about your experience with biracial and biphobia. I feel like that is still ever present in the LGBTQ plus community. What's your experience been with that? Like in terms of, you know, let's talk about biphobia. Have you had any experiences where you've had that? Because I I have listeners that have asked about that because I identify as a lesbian. And so some of the stuff I can't answer, like I can't answer Mm -hmm. those questions. So yeah, what's your experience been like? I feel pretty lucky in the sense I'm very privileged that I personally have not dealt with a lot of, I've definitely dealt with some, but I haven't dealt with a lot of biphobia or bi erasure in the sense Mm -hmm. that I've been dating a girl since the get go. So people tend to wrongfully like more believe that a girl is bisexual when she is dating another woman, Mm -hmm. you know, which is, it's fucked up and completely invalid and invalidates people who are in heterosexual passing relationships and identify as bi or pan or really anything. But I guess in the sense that like when I first started coming out, I had family members who really didn't understand bisexuality and they thought that it was a phase, you know, and that either I was a lesbian and like not ready to admit it or straight. And just a college girl who's confused. Mm -hmm. And then also in that sense, since I've been dating my girlfriend for so long, I've had family members be like, so are you a lesbian now? I'm like, no, I'm bisexual, but it's like 85% women and 15% to the (laughs) other, you know? Other, you just describe it as other. And 15% other. Um, So because I so openly post about my girlfriend or Lauren Haregi or women in general, uh, people are like, are you actually bisexual? Because you talk a lot about women. I'm like, you are part of the problem until I give you a flat out reason to not be bisexual. Like you shouldn't just be assuming that on other people and invalidating their sexuality, like until the day. And it's 100% valid to explore your sexuality and grow and change as life comes about like Mm -hmm. who knows maybe one day I will identify as a lesbian but I'm just so unbelievably comfortable in bisexuality and I have been since the get-go so until I say like I am not bisexual there should be no reason for anyone to assume otherwise and it's actually funny that you bring this up because uh this just made me think about this. I live in an apartment, a small apartment building in New York, and you can hear everyone in the hallway. And me, I love to look out the door, mm-hmm. like hole and see who's in the hallway, see what they're up to. I just like, I like to keep tabs, <laughs> keeping Georgia. I like to keep tabs on what's going on. And someone, one of my neighbors had friends over and the friends were leaving and I hear them stomping down all the steps. I look through the peephole. I'm listening to the conversation. (laughs) It's not peeping if it's that easy. Yeah. Um, And the guy says, they're talking about some other girl and says something along the lines of like, she's bisexual, but she's never been with a girl. And then the girl goes, she's bisexual, but she's never been with a girl. I'm like, yes, queen, invalidate that bisexuality. Get it. You know, it's little things like that. Yeah. You know, where you think you're just talking or saying something, but Mm -hmm. like, me overhearing that I'm like damn so you really only think about I don't know who this woman is you know I will have no impact on her for the rest of my life unless I run into her in the hall yeah then it's game over but like little things like that people who are bisexual hear that and they remember that and it's just like nice thanks (laughs) yeah and, and obviously like they weren't thinking that anyone was listening and that was their true, yeah. their true colors showing. Someone is always listening. Yeah. That's all I have to say. In life. <laughs> <laughs> At least in that building. It's not me, it's someone else. <laughs> I just feel like it's such a form of gaslighting to, you know, yes. say, and that's not just for the bike, just for the gay community, the queer community at, at large, you know, oh, you 
you haven't slept with them. So how do you know you like them? And it's exactly. like, you know, you don't it's ask your version you too. How do you know you're straight? Exactly. <clears throat> I'm like, you don't ask a 10 year old child, like you've never been with the boy. How do you know you like boys? Like what? That's disgusting. Like, and why, why is that reason valid through all the ages of life? Yeah. Like when you know, you know. I also find that so weird that like people and not just sexualizing kids at large because there's like a whole story behind that, but just like, you know, and it could be like an aunt or an uncle like, oh my God, do you like that boy? Do you have a crush on that boy? Like, oh, do you like that girl? Do you have a crush on that girl? Like, I that, that shit's weird. Like that it's shit's so weird. We think that it's, it's uncomfortable. Normal, you know? Yeah. Like I've seen that like happen with my like little cousins and stuff like yeah. that. Like, or a baby like, in a oh onesie God. that says chick magnet. <clears throat> It's like, that is a three month old child. That's basically still a fetus. Yeah. <laughs> like, but it's like, if you were to say anything, they'd be like, well, it's just funny. You know what I mean? It's just funny. It's not yeah. a big deal. It's not a big deal. That's to be an inspiration. Literally. Part. It's not a big deal. Not a big deal. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> Until it becomes a big fucking deal. We need deal. merch. It's not a big deal. Yeah. Yeah, literally. And then that's the same couple where if it was a girl baby wearing a chick magnet onesie, they'd be like, what the hell? This is against the American value. This is perverted. This is too much. <laughs> yes. This is too much. I swear to God, I just saw something on, on Instagram about, or no, it was Halsey. I, I watched, it was like an interview with Halsey because mm-hmm. she had some music video that, you know, she was, you know, um, kissing a girl in and she was like people would not be out here like calling me like super sexual and all of this stuff if it was just like a if it was a guy like yes. we live in such a sexual you know world Every, yeah everything is overly sexualized sex sells but you know yeah. if it's if and it's I'm somehow, buying yeah. but <laughs> I mean yeah obviously <laughs> obviously but like yeah it's just a double standard like it's just like mm-hmm. oh that's too much if you're you know making out with with another girl like blah 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 yeah. And yeah, and that's so, it's so funny. There's this, there's this movie. It's, I'm not an easy man and it's a French movie and it's on Netflix Mm -hmm. and it basically chronicles that it is so good. And it basically is like this super pig guy who gets hit on the head and then he ends up turning. It's like the world is like now women are in charge. So it's like, it flops. Oh, so dang. The it's super cool. It's super awesome. But yeah, it, it, it is so crazy. And he like is now woken up in this world where like men are second class citizens. And it is wow. so cool. It is like a huge pers- like, so you might like it. It's a huge What's like perspective again? shift. I'm not an easy man. I'm not an easy man. Okay. Mm-hmm. Nice. It is really, really good. I've watched it a few times, but it I'll really it does. Out. It like, it switches that whole thing of like, women are in charge for, you know, all of time. And, and, you know, men are the ones that are second class citizens. And it really makes you think about little things that you never even thought of. You know, I feel like there's this veil that people on earth when they become feminists, and they realize what's going on around them. And Mm -hmm. then they see it all. And I was kind of in when I first saw that I was like, well, I, I had watched a couple of things and I was like, why do I have bows on my underwear? Like, why is this? I, I went into like a crazy camp yeah, and I was wait, like cutting what? all the bows off. <laughs> yeah. I was doing crazy shit. I was like blue and pink. It's so arbitrary. Children for men and women. What the fuck? And I like went off. Don't look at my, the pink <clears throat> chair. <laughs> yeah. My parents were a little concerned about me. I was living at home at the time and I was cutting off all the bows on my underwear. But yeah, like I think once you lift the veil, you can't undo it. And then now yes. you see everything and then little things. And then you're just like, what the hell? All of this stuff, mm-hmm. um, which is like totally crazy. So uh, back to what we were um, talking about in, in terms of like, how do you know if you like someone? I had a question about that. Um, and I listened to your, your podcast episode. You had a podcast with Ashley Gavin. She's super funny. Oh, that funny. was so much fun. She's awesome. Yeah, she's freaking hilarious. Her and Gara are awesome. I had Ashley on in the summer And you had talked a little bit about, you know, just not liking to talk about it and certain things because, you know, for a while, like you hadn't had sex and stuff like that. And so I had a question where someone was like, you know, how, how can you be confident in telling someone that, Hey, I, I am, you know, queer, I am gay, I am bi without actually doing it. And I feel like I I had this too. Like I had this too, because, you know, I, I also was a a late bloomer as well. Mm -hmm. I think this relates, you know, in a, in a way to what we were just talking about. Mm -hmm. And I think it also has to do with like my personal, like 
moral values, not necessarily moral values, but I knew that I wanted to lose my virginity to someone that I was in love with and in a committed relationship with. So from the get go, it has never been like a sense of oh, like comparing sex with a man to sex with a woman or mm-hmm. a person. So I never had to worry about the sense of like comparing sex. I just knew that I was like saving myself for someone that was really important to me. I just like, I knew, you know, and to me, like a kiss is a kiss. A BJ is a BJ, just kidding. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but it was like, I knew that I was saving this thing at the end of the day. So I just knew it, it was, yeah. a, it was a feeling for me. I didn't yep. need to have physical validation. Yep. Um, I knew that I was attracted to guys. I knew that I was attracted to girls. I knew that When I had a drink in me, I wanted to smooch on some ladies, you know? (laughs) So it was, it was never like a, how can I know if I've never experienced it? Cause I don't think that's how sexuality works. It's not a science test that you have to have like an experiment. I mean, yes, you can experiment while figuring out your sexuality. But for me personally, it was just understanding my mind and my heart. It wasn't a physical thing for me. Yeah. That's awesome. I love that. That's Thank really you. great. Oh, I lost my train of thought. Been there. Oh, lost my, it's like, I almost listening. lost my train of thought. Like while we were talking, I was like, <laughs> shit, what was the question? Why did I talk about blowjobs? <laughs> it definitely was shocking. All. I was like, oh shit. It's like when I, I'll like, li- I'll start listening and then I'll forget what I had, what I was about to say, which I guess is a good thing because I'm actively listening. Oh my God. I'm just really like, I really invite people into my stories like that. It's like waiting on bated breath. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But um, I really, really, I like that. I think that people's journeys are so different. You know, like, I think you, you and 100% can know that you're gay, you're bi, you're queer, you're, you know, non-binary without having to do some sort of um, experimenting when it comes to being physical, because, you know, knowing your sexuality is, is mental, spiritual, emotional, and physical. Mm-hmm. And exactly. So some of those things don't always have to come. Yeah. Yeah. And it's only the standard for queer people. How do you know if you haven't, if you haven't tried, you know, you don't ask Mm -hmm. straight people, how do you know if you haven't tried, you know, it's literally only the standard for us. Yeah. So that's what I also was like, well, if no one else is asking, how do I know like a hundred percent sure I'm straight? Like, why should I put in that energy? Like straight people don't have to question, you know what I mean? Because the the world is tailored to them. The world is tailored to mm-hmm. heteronormativity and heteronormative culture. I feel like as just queer people in general, like there's this slight offness and you think, oh, maybe it's because I'm socially awkward or maybe it's because I don't like the same interests or, and it's not even just that. It's not even just like, oh, I don't like the same interests or, oh, this or whatever. It's like some deeper layer of like, feeling misunderstood you know what I mean and I kind of felt like that when I was growing up like you know I had friends and I was extroverted and I did a lot of stuff and I was well liked or whatever but I always felt like there was something a little off and I couldn't quite put my finger on it and yeah no I get that yeah I was like Like, I I was in the group but I kind of felt like an outside looking in sometimes Yeah. yeah Yeah. I totally felt that way. And even when I felt like I was in, I don't know if you want to use the terms inner circle or anything like that, but even then I felt like almost like an imposter, like especially, yeah, when it comes to like dating and things like that and like boys and the way that just, it was so different. Like when you look back, you're like, wow, like all the masks I have put on to, to integrate. And not even realizing this until right now. I'm like, <gasps> do I need to go back to therapy? Like- <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's super weird. It's, it, it's such a weird phenomenon. Like you never feel quite in there. And I never felt quite like that. Once I had queer friends and I built a like, queer community and I was like, holy shit, like people feel the same way. Like the way that just they're talking, they're acting, like all of this stuff. It was like, sh- there's just the little things. And then I was like, mm-hmm. yeah, because I was hanging around a bunch of straight girls who would talk about boys all the time and I just did it to like do it and then in college it really came to a head because obviously everyone was having sex and everyone you know they were exploring their sexuality but then I had friends who were really like religious so they weren't doing that well Mm -hmm. I'm not super religious but I'm not there 
So I was like, yep. oh, fuck, where do yeah, I Yeah, that's how I was. I fit in? <laughs> what do I do now? Yeah, I was like, okay, what, how, how, and then like, cause I feel like I got off in high school because, you know, you can fool around and whatever, whatever, make it's out. high school, you're young. Yeah. And then, but once it hits college, it really shows. And I feel like it really exposed mm-hmm. these repressed parts of myself that I had to face to face because like, you know, like people be really explicit when they would talk about sex stuff. And I was super weird about it because I was I'd be so like, uncomfortable. You do what? Yeah, I was so uncomfortable, but I didn't want to be uncomfortable. So I was like, yes. pissed about the fact that I was uncomfortable. Cause I was like me now I am super open. I'm super like, ah, whatever. And I was like, I knew that somehow inside, I knew that I wasn't this person and I was so mad at myself and I, mm-hmm. I hated it. Um, cause I, I would, I wasn't a prude, but I wasn't doing the things that would pr- like, that would make me not a prude. Yeah. It was, and so I, I would just say that. I'm so selective and I'm so picky and yep. I'm very achievement based. It's really easy to be, <laughs> so you're either super achievement oriented, super religious. There's so many masks that make it easy to mm-hmm. like mask the fact that you're gay, but yeah. There were just, and it was harder when I, when I got into college, it was much harder because it was harder to, to mask that. And then I had to come face to face with it. I agree. Um, Which is super, I feel like I'm just kind of realizing this a little bit now. I like knew it, but now I'm like, oh fuck. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, wait, that that happened. Interesting. It's coming out unscathed (laughs) with that. But it all worked out in the end. It really did. All in the name of self-discovery. Honest to God. But yeah, I mean, we kind of went on a tangent there, but like, yeah, back to, <laughs> back to the thing, like, <laughs> um, this is about me. Yeah. Reminder. <laughs> this is about Georgia Bridgers. We're going to ask her more questions, but yeah, when it comes to God, that, that was, I mean, sorry, that was just so eye opening. Yeah. Are you <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm talk like, about it more? Whoa. No, no. I just like, you just hit like everything right on the head. I was like, whoa. Yeah. That happened press shit (laughs) yeah you gotta listen to your inner gut like there were so many times when I was like trying to like do that stuff and like I would try to like hook up with a guy or I would be a super tease like not put out and stuff like that yes Uh, I was such a fucking tease same oh god yikes yeah sometimes you you take the tease too far and then I'm like shit I gotta go home no (laughs) Like, no, I, you're like, I didn't no 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 I was I was I was kidding I was kidding oh my god <laughs> why are you walking s- to your frat house right now I gotta go yes I would get so relieved so like <laughs> there was this one time where you know because it's it's hard when you're not out and even if you're not completely that to yourself but you still want validation right you want male validation mm-hmm. you want the validation of your friends oh my god with them oh he likes you he's so cute oh, oh, yeah whatever yeah and he likes you so you're like oh yeah like he's like kind of cute and like I'm kind of drunk so like sure I'll make out with him like that's fun like why not dance, whatever and then I'll just go yeah. on with my life and go home and then you wake up in the it. morning <laughs> yeah, yeah literally yeah there was one time that this like mm-hmm. I actually like took this guy home and I was so pissed I was like oh fuck like I'm gonna have to do yes. like, out of my, you know, the thing, the lies that I have to create, what, what am I going to say? And I went to like, go, I think I eat like a whole piece of cheese. It was like a piece of like cheddar cheese or some shit. And I was like, oh, I'm going to go to the bathroom, going to get some cheese, going to come back. And I came back and he was flat out snoring, like out like a light. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, yes. yes! That's hilarious. That's not normal. <laughs> no, it's not though. It's not like you shouldn't take someone home and be like, how do I get out of this? Oh, you know? yeah, it was just, it was so bad. And I remember the next morning he was like, oh, he was being like cute and stuff. And, but I was like, not having it. I was like, like oh, all okay. right, see ya. My roommates. And then my roommate was so psyched about it. She started making food like for oh, her and she no. always made food for her boyfriend and for me. I was like the child. I would always like, you know, she would always cook, but she was so psyched. She was like, I'm going to make a breakfast. Everyone's oh. going to come over, blah, blah, blah. Everyone's like, oh my God, like you, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, he fell asleep um so classic there's that but, there you uh, go yeah I'm so glad I don't have to deal with that <laughs> yeah. but um back to Georgia <laughs> yeah here we go no I like these stories I, want I know <laughs> I'm really uncovering a lot of shit we're really uncovering a lot here <laughs> this is like group therapy Renee Brown would be so excited
Yeah. All right, guys, this is Questions with the Queers, part of the podcast where we try to answer your questions on life, love, happiness, et cetera, that we probably have no business trying to answer. We're unqualified. None. No, nope. but I will give you my opinion. Yes. <laughs> Unfiltered. <laughs> Unsolicited or not. Yes. So this question um, is coming from Anonymous and they write, hi, Georgia and Brie. I'm currently in a long distance relationship. We've seen each other in person twice and have talked extensively about her moving to my city. I'm very excited for this as we are moving forward in our relationship, but I am also deeply afraid of this because it's a big transition from how our relationship started and currently is. Any advice you could give to someone going through this? This is a really, really, really great question. Mm -hmm. And I totally feel and understand that, like that fear that you have, you know, my girlfriend and I, we started dating in August of 2018. We were long distance all the way up until May of 2019, when I moved to New York city, just for the summer for an internship. So we like, quote unquote, broke the distance from May to August. And while the, that first emotion was just so much excitement because we finally like got to feel like a quote unquote real couple, like, you know, you are a real couple, no matter how far the distance is Mm -hmm. because relationships are built on emotions and communication. Mm -hmm. And yes, of course, physical miss what's a good word F- physical distance is physique physical Phys- ability physicality <laughs> the closeness of two people um yes of course that plays into our relationship but that's in my opinion I don't think that's the basis of a good relationship so you already know that you've got a stellar relationship if you've been together this amount of time and I feel like you get to know someone more quickly through a long distance relationship because you are so like solid on that communication. So don't go into the fear that like, this is going to change your relationship for the worse. Like go into it with the excitement, be like ready to experience new things, you know, Mm -hmm. like you get to wake up and text your partner. Hey, do you want to go grab coffee this morning? You know, things like that. And it's such a beautiful moment just to get to like wake up next to your partner and be like, Oh my God, like we did all of that distance, like for a reason, this is the reason this was the goal. And I will say it's going to be new in the sense of at least what I experienced is that now you've got a new element of communication to work with. And that's the communication of being with each other you know, say you get into a little fight, you're not apologizing over the phone, over FaceTime, you're right there in front of each other, like heart on your damn sleeve. So I guess I would say just like, be ready for this new experience in your relationship. Find the joy in it and focus on that. It's 100% normal to be nervous and afraid, but that will go away. I think it's probably more just the anticipation of it all right now you know like you're waiting it's it's just like a a waiting moment at this point Mm -hmm. so I would say just take a deep breath and go into this with joy because this is a joyful time for you and get excited for what is to come and grow in your relationship you will grow and be closer than you ever thought you could be I love that that's awesome I think it is hard when you're in anything transition wise, you know, and not just, you know, going from long distance to short distance and living, um, living in the same. I don't know if you guys are moving in together or just moving to the same city, um, but that's a transition in itself. Mm-hmm. If, you know, not just the, like being, you know, in the same city, but also living together is also a, a huge step that it, it does come with some fears. And, and I think that, it's just a lot of transition, which I understand why there are some anxieties with it. Cause it's not even just, you know, are they going to like me in person? And, you know, like the physicality side, that's just, if you, if, you know, you're not on the asexual spectrum, I don't, I don't know any of that. Um, and that might not even be in there, um, which, which yeah. is fine. It takes, takes one of the things out. Um, yeah. <laughs> honestly. <laughs> Don't have to worry about that. Yeah, seriously. 
but yeah, I think with, with all of that, like will come clarity. And I think if you guys have done the hard work of, of building a foundation, you know, mentally and, and emotionally, then, you know, that stuff will be fun. And when you're doing something for the first time, like have fun with it and be okay with making mistakes and being, you know, weird and awkward. And like we said before, yeah. like, just say you're fucking nervous if you're nervous. Yeah. You know I mean? Like they're not going to be like, why are you nervous? And I'm sure your girlfriend <clears throat> is feeling all the same emotions. Yeah. So like you could lean on each other in this time, you know, mm-hmm. like, don't forget that you've got someone there who has your back and you've got her back. So yeah, you got this, you got this, you got this. I believe in you. Well, awesome. Sweet, sweet. Um, we'll go to the lightning round. Um, so Georgia, do you want to answer some questions really, really quick? You know, I do. Yeah. Okay. Um, number one, King Princess or Kehlani? <gasps> oh, how could you do this to me? King Princess. <laughs> Ooh, I love King Princess. Everyone fucking says Kehlani on this too. I was about to. Yep. It's hard. It's I make hard. them hard. Um, <laughs> Girl in Red or Janelle Monae? Janelle Monae. Ooh, okay. Tegan and Sarah, Haley Kyoko. Haley Kyoko. All right, all right. Um, coffee or tea? Coffee. Beanies or snapbacks? Beanies. Ooh. Cake or cookies? Cake. Giving presents or getting presents? Getting. Ooh. Are you the gay that squishes the bugs? Depends on the bug. Okay, all right. Which bugs <laughs> are squishable and which are not? I can do spiders. I can do like gnats, but like anything hard and crunchy, like stink bugs or anything that's really fast. Yeah. Or like, I don't know. It just depends on my girlfriend and I, like who's who's in a a better headspace to squish a scary (laughs) bug. (laughs) Are we emotionally ready? Are you in a headspace to get a kill a hornet right now no. yeah I hate things that fly they're so unpredictable I don't I never uh, know where they're going it's, I will never I, I can't do moths moths are my fear <laughs> I can't do it Ugh. it's such a weird it's such a weird fear out of all the bugs you're like spiders and eh, I, I hate them no because moths they're so spastic and they're yeah. gross and they just they, fly yeah. into things they, they really do some that. of they're them really are like literally this big oh I can't handle it <laughs> It just came out of your grandma's closet, ate, ate her cardigan oh, from, from 1953. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. A um, few more. Uh, Toilet paper. Do you roll it over or under? Over. I hate question. under. Ooh, over. Okay. Okay. Favorite queer movie of all time? Carol. I love Carol. That's so good. Makes me cry every damn time. Mm, that's a good one. Last question. Last song you listen to on repeat? What was the last song I listened to on repeat? Every like couple weeks, I'll just find a new song and that'll be the only song I listen to. There's actually this one song that I'm just like thinking of that I really like. It's called Ride My Bike. Let me find the artist real quick. Her name is Maude Latour. Okay. And she sounds like Lord and Billie Eilish. So I really liked that song. I will listen to that in between. That was a good one to Lil Nas for the rest of the day. Perfect. Um, <laughs> awesome. Well, Georgia, thank you so much for being on this podcast. If you want to check out more about Georgia, you can find her at Georgia Bridgers on all platforms. And as always, you can find me on all platforms at Brie Logan. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe or you're listening and check out our full video episodes on YouTube. Link is in the description below. That's it for this episode. My queers, be you, be queer, stay safe, and we will see you on the next episode.